really exploitable. And now I think he is really starting to kind of build himself up and into a real threat and you know, could be the difference today. Well, it feels like both these teams still building up their splits as it's been a wild ride for everyone here in the NALCS. But we'll see what the draft does have in store. Zoe, Talia, and Mundo banned by Clutch. And Nocturne, Rakan, and I was about to say Aatrox, but TSM quick to ban out as is expected. Yeah, definitely expected. Uh, we could see Kindred, you know, as, as a pick, and there it is getting locked in right away. Uh, definitely a very, very strong jungler. Some of the funneling options are available, but hasn't really been uh, TSM priority so far this split. Uh, but, you know, for TSM, they finished fifth six last split. They need to get a lot of points moving towards Worlds if they want to qualify. You know, last split was the first time they had ever missed the finals at all and you know going out early in the quarterfinals now they're sitting actually tied for seventh there's only a couple of games between them and first though so if they can improve if they can fix some of these issues uh, they can start to climb back up towards the top of the table but they need to be in a good positioning and secure at least enough points to get to the regional qualifier yeah it's kind of intense to think that despite how close the league has been these teams are playing their last game of this week to about mm -hmm. 500 after five weeks of play yeah you'll only be five and five if you take a win here so Certainly been rough all around. Swain and Morgana, though, the picks for TSM. Swain, certainly another champion that's had uh, quite a lot of priority. Yeah, certainly has. And traditionally, we've been seeing it a, a lot in the bottom lane. Uh, very, very powerful there. We could be seeing it go mid here for Bjergsen, though. Uh, Sven has not really been uh, nearly as, as much of a mage guy. Uh, he did bring out the one Heimerdinger game, but besides that, it has been all marksmen. Uh, this is a flex pick, though. Could be Bjergsen, could be Sven. We'll have to kind of see how the draft does play out. For now though, Oriana gonna be pretty strong, I think regardless, it is a pretty safe blind pick. So uh, Fevman should be happy to play against the Swain or really anything else that could come out. Yep, certainly had a lot of good Swain games himself. So have to think he'll know both sides of the matchup. We also like Hako taking Tom Kent. He's the Morgana master, so he should know how to play against it also. And TSM, pretty safe trundle pick here for Grig, I assume. Yeah, Tom Kent's good. Uh, into the Morgana and also the Swain, actually, if you know, for that claw, uh, pulling them out of that route is very, very important, especially with the Swain passive, the kind of gank in after you get CC'd, uh, can make those CC's so devastating if you do get caught. So having Tom Kench uh, to deliver you from that is gonna be pretty important. No true tanks, really, to kind of uh, alt off of here for Trundle just yet. Yes, there is the Tom Kench, but uh, we'll see if, if Clutch is gonna wanna draft into that. Uh, oftentimes, when you have a, a damaged jungler, people don't actually want to draft a tank, t a tank top into Trundle because one tank teams tend to really suffer against that Trundle. The ultimate can make it very, very difficult to actually survive in those team fights. It's going to give uh, Trundle sometimes more than you get for having that tank yourself. We'll see where they're going to go. We've been seeing a lot of Mundo today, obviously off the tables for now. So no Ornn available either. Maybe getting more of a kind of carry style matchup in the top lane. Uh, GP, Orn, Mundo, all taken away. Kind of interesting to see the Syndra ban here by Clutch. I think at least respecting the fact that Swain could be flexed yeah. around here for TSM. But kind of a bevy huh. of champions ban in this phase. Could be Gragas top. Uh, very, very likely here for Haunter. Gragas has actually, uh, because of some of the buffs he's gotten recently, uh, more AP scaling, which actually gives him damage reduction on his W. And also the 50 bonus attack range on your W is really, really big for trading in lane. So uh, that is going to help you out quite a bit in that 1v1. Uh, but you can still look for kind of some aggressive picks into that. Something like a Darius uh, can be a very strong answer. Rumble, actually the very quick lock in here for Solo into that Gragas. Pretty interesting. I actually don't think it's that strong of a matchup into Gragas because Gragas actually can do things like going uh, Comet and just using uh, Q-Poke with the barrels to actually trade fairly effectively. You will get pushed in, but you know, Gragas builds very happily into MR early as well. Things like the Adaptive and Spirit Visage can be very powerful in those sorts of matchups. And you can actually look for all-in plays when the jungler comes. It is going to be Talon mid, so it's going to be Swain bot, Talon mid for Bjergsen. Could be smite for him. We'll see if it's going to be a funnel or just a standard kind of a smite mid and also have a jungler. That's more what I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. And there's, this is a very interesting squad here uh, for TSM. They have the ability to be extremely proactive, to move around the map. The Gragas answers the Kindred ultimate fairly well and is going to be pretty powerful playmaking on the Jin, on the Rumble. And if, you know, Hako actually eats someone up to save them from binding, well, Gragas can ult you both back in. So there is a lot of playmaking potential, a lot of ability for TSM to make early moves across the map. That being said, 
there was a powerful team fight here as well on the side of Clutch with the Jin, the Orianna, uh, as well as that Rumble. There is a lot of team fight damage and a lot of kind of AOE there. Uh, plus they have some of the safety against these assassins and kind of burst mages with the Kindred Ultimate. So gonna be an exciting one. I think Clutch, uh, we'll see how they look, but the team that's taking things slow as well in a lot of their games and kind of won as a team mid to late, this kind of comp does suit them. Kind of giving everyone a bit of power. I think a bit more focused on the TSM side, Sven, and especially Bjergsen, yeah. have a lot of agency in this game. They really do, but honestly, even when you're playing against a composition like this, where you know someone like Rumble and Kindred and all these guys are fairly squishy, even a more of a, a tank top like Gragas still can get enough damage that you really can be very impactful in bursting these guys down. And I think so much of the TSM game is going to be about playmaking. It's going to be about how good can you be with these roams for Bjergsen on the Talon. How good can Hauntzer be with his engages and ultimating people out of that Kindred Alden? That is going to be so important. And I think TSM fans really want to see an effective carry game from Bjergsen because he has not been looking on point this split. Has not, and I think in, in general for the team, we, t we hear so much that, you know, snapping lost streaks is huge for team momentum and morale. This is a real important one for TSM to win, not just to kind of stop the fall that's been happening in the last few games, but beating what's kind of become your rival in a very strange way and beating a team that always beats you has got to be an even bigger booster than normal. So we'll see what happens here. Do also like seeing Sven away from Marksman. He was one of the last players to get off ADs and start to branch out. Didn't have too much success on Heimer. We'll see how Swain changes that equation. Had a pretty good laning phase in the Heimer game, but really wasn't able to kind of uh, close that one out. And, and that can be the difficulty. I mean, getting so many games in on these new style of champions to really learn them and be effective on those champions at all stages of the game is very, very difficult. It's also worth pointing out that Apollo is actually going Hail of Blades. So you know, a very powerful uh, rune here on the Jin does bring a lot of extra damage you know, with those quick attacks can be extremely extremely strong but something Zyreen was talking about uh, yesterday which I you know, kind of thought was, was pretty smart was just talking about the fact that when you are into these mage matchups these poke matchups then sometimes it's better to actually just bring fleet footwork to actually be able to kind of sustain through a lot of the poke that they can bring that being said if Apollo can get through that laning phase and not be punished regardless uh, then he is going to have more team fight damage and kind of more burst that he's bringing into the mid game in general, I think the bot lane for Clutch looking to have a better performance than yesterday. Certainly have been pretty traditionally aggressive, although obviously Harkoi not on one of his more well-known aggressive champions. We'll see how that changes up. Bjergsen is already level two. One of the benefits of having Smite on mid means you get a nice early EXP lead. Yeah, and Harko definitely not on one of the most aggressive champions on the no. edge, but you know, you still can make global plays. You still can roam around the map, and he is playing Spellbook. So this is the buff Spellbook, and if you don't actually know how this works now, it's not just go back to uh, to swapping to TP and having a low cooldown. You actually have to rotate through the summoners, uh, and as you rotate through each of the six summoners, as bot lane's gonna get ganked, Trundle is behind them. This, this is gonna have to be a flash, very likely. Yeah, Hakua already the first target. He's trying to run away, oh, nice will get dodged step. out, and I'll actually save their summoners as a result. I mean, that's pretty poorly done from TSM. I think you guarantee the flash if you pillar into binding because you're so slow on that pillar that you really cannot dodge the binding then. Instead, they kind of tried to go for the more greedy play, which is you force the flash with the binding, then you pillar them back in, you get the kill. No. Uh, in this case, though, TSM comes out with nothing uh, because they tried to go for it all. And I think even a bit more egregious because I forgot to mention in champs. Like, we did remember the other interaction with Trundle and Swain. Get a free yeah. pullback. Yep, you can pull so them in. TSM maybe could have played that a bit more patiently, but for now, Clutch do a very good job of avoiding the first threat there from Grig. Yeah, and impressive to get out of that without having to blow a summoner, but either way, summoner spellbook, you have to rotate through essentially a cycle of six summoners, and each time you do it, the cooldown gets lower on the next one. You can actually swap out in combat now, so it does allow for a little bit more aggression, a little bit more utility. His base one is going to be the cleanse, but once you're out of combat, he can swap at any time to something like an ignite once the first cooldown is up or an exhaust for an all-in fight. So it's pretty cool, but you have to be very proactive with it. Big skin pop. Huckle going to hold on to his cleanse, actually. Oop. Gets low, but not low enough. Does have a potion still to chew through, so should be okay. But another one of those combos, and you can you can be in a lot of danger. He does still have the cleanse, though, and... This is this is nice play here from Sven, and it's something Apollo has to be very careful about. Is you see Apollo is positioning actually back by those range minions. The way that Never Move works is it actually hits the thing that is furthest away at the maximum range. So if you stand right behind those range minions, it's very easy to actually connect on the Never Move. 
Sometimes, even though it's kind of counterintuitive, you actually have to step forward to avoid that. So it'll then hook on the range minions, and then you can kind of go backwards and retreat. But it becomes difficult. Really nice binding. Hakoi, though, ready with the Devour. Does save Apollo. And it may be wishing that he took complete footwork right now. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one of those cases where if you are getting hit by this poke, you're going to get pushed out. He went door and shield, which is going to help him with some of that. And has a potion available as well that is, is kind of chugging, but uh, he is getting very heavily harassed. And you can look on the side of TSM, both of them took uh, the Mana Biscuit talent, so they both have their Biscuits. Neither of them have had to use really uh, very many potions at all. Zven hasn't had to use any, and Mithy only a single one, so they can certainly stick around, and Apollo may be forced back to base relatively early, but that being said, if they can actually wait till Spellbook cooldown is off, they could both TV back, because Apollo already has his TP. Yeah. In mid lane now, though, we saw a bit of the early exchange, it looks like bases have come through for both. Jerkson trying to rush to that TMN here, and then just basically get roaming. That's the general talent strategy. So Biven on the other side, just hanging out. Another blasting one, probably to help clear more than anything else. Just wants to keep up with Jerkson in farm, and try not to let him get too carried away in the side lanes. Yeah, definitely the case. They are looking at this Ocean Dragon, though, as a, an early target, and that would be very, very nice here for TSM. Talked about it last game, but really is the strongest early game dragon there is, and because they have bot lane priority, they can go for this fairly freely. Bjergsen will just head back to mid lane and kind of get that farm, and three men knock down this Drake. There is in the area, but it would be very hard for him to actually face check into this. Three level six on Kindred, so we'll go over to TSM, and they're gonna have that very strong laning advantage. Didn't come up uh, in this case either, but obviously having two smites can make some of that stuff mm -hmm. easier as well. So certainly seeing teams get pretty creative now that smite mid is becoming more of a thing. And one of the kind of cool things to talk a little bit about the smite mid on the talent, you know, I've had some conversations with people who are kind of like, well, wh why do you even bother taking it? Why not just go ignite? You're barely even farming in the jungle camps. And while that's often true, uh, one of the things that can be very nice about it is you, you can almost look at it like more of a utility style mm -hmm. ignite. Um, because if you go for challenging smite, as a lot of people do, or whatever, you can, you can go along those lines and kind of have a little bit of a similar style to ignite. But you also have much more utility in actually pushing the waves and roaming. That's really where Talon excels and what he wants to do. So even if you're just using it, once you have your Tiamat, you smite the cannon, you W Tiamat the wave, the entire wave is instantly dead. You can get out to a side lane and really threaten pressure, and that's where Talon is mostly succeeding. At this level, you rarely see Talon you know, getting solo kills in the 1v1, so it's almost like a super minion dematerializer almost that really does allow you to be more proactive and, and kind of threaten those side waves. Plus, if you do get into the enemy jungle and there's no one there, then great, you take a camp. Great, you help secure an objective. So it doesn't always have to be about just getting the most possible. There's the team at already done for Bjergsen as well, so pretty good clip. Mm -hmm. Seven minutes completion there for that one, and this will change a lot of how he's able to pressure the lane yeah. and play. But that being said, I mean, Bevan has, has played these early stages of the lane very well. You know, he is up in farm, and, and the faster you can actually push that mid lane, the more that Bjergsen is going to get punished every single time he roams, right? Because Bjergsen wants to have full wave control. He wants his minions at your turret, you farming those, while he is killing the side lane. That is really the ideal world that you're kind of living in, and... In this case, if Bevan is able to really shove out those waves very quickly on the Orianna, every time Bjergsen roams, there's much more of an opportunity cost. And, and that's where it can start to really kind of fall flat. But TSM looking for one of these proactive plays, three-man topside. But they will call it off. Yep, quickly one-man topside. Looks like a not really good angle there on the Solo, who is doing well in his individual lane, it should be pointed out. Literal also grabbing a crab. Haven't checked on his bounties in a bit, but we can find that out pretty short order. Kind of funny to see the triple Doran's ring ah, it's actually back. Uh, on Haunter. I don't know if it should be back though. That's <laughs> kind of the question. It's it's one of those things because the, the passive is unique now. So, you know, I, I do believe that is still the case. Yes. And um, that was a change a while ago that really kind of pushed a lot of these kind of lane bully style tanks out of the meta because they could go triple Doran's ring into tank. Uh, back when you know Nautilus and Gragas and all these guys were up there all the time. And it really did make you very, very effective. It is still going to give him a lot of laning power, but I guess it's more arguable, I think, whether one of those should be a Dark Seal, whether it should be, you know, Corrupting Potion, Dark Seal, Doran, something along those lines, I think, you know, can uh, be a little bit of a better setup. And it also still does delay your item progression a lot, because there's already haunting guys on solo, whereas all the gold uh, for Haunter here has been spent on these laning items, right? So he's going to be slower to get uh, to something like an Abyssal or or any of those major items which could kind of help them out in that one. Nice chocolate there from Forbidden, but 
Doesn't have too much follow-up damage after that. It's really just for the lane priority, though, right? This is this is what he's looking for. If Bjergsen is under his turret, Fevvin is, is winning, right? Because Bjergsen is not going to be able to, to get up to the side lanes and be super effective. So Fevvin has the blue buff, just expending the shockwave, pushing him in. Bjergsen has to go back to base. He says, all right, guys, safe in the side lanes. Push up, play aggressive. By Fevvin playing this lane dominant aggressive style and, and shoving it in, that's allowing Solo in the top lane to play more aggressively and, and do better there. And that's you know giving some safety to their bot lane who is already struggling uh, to not perhaps be getting go. I like his early item choices as a result of that. Haunter and Solo still fighting it out, but there's the equalizer. You know, try and force Haunter away. Haunter does trade his ulti in, but a good harpoon from Solo could see a bit more return damage. Instead, Haunter drinks up and is back to lane. Yep, we'll just kind of staying up, so. Nicely done, disengaging there by Hauntzer. Uh, but a pretty even trade on both sides, and these guys you know, are trading very evenly overall. This bot lane has just been getting kind of bullied this whole time. You can see Apollo has been getting pushed in. He's waiting for his TP to come back up again. Oh, the bait from Lyra. Bjergsen goes and visits with a Shadow Assault. Rick's Here's Brig. Lyra gonna get knocked back up. Does have his ult, and I think TSM know that maybe they've gone a bit too far forward. Do pull away, though. Yeah, patient play there from Lyra to not actually expend the ultimate. A nice initial bait, pulling in Bjergsen, but really it just becomes that ultimate down for Bjergsen, not too much actually expended. They're looking for a return here, though, onto Bjergsen. Fevvin almost has his ult, you know, very, very shortly. Uh, and he could look for that, but they will call off the play as he wants to try to get that bounty, which was unfortunately taken away by Grig. Always well, feels bad, man, when your bounties get taken away. But we have seen Lyra, I believe, do this yesterday. He's going for a bit more early power with the Warrior. Seeing kind of a split, I would say, in general, of is it Bloodraiser now? Devour? Not Devourer. Bloodraiser. Bloodraiser versus Warrior. Yeah. Obviously, a bit of a scaling difference there. I think Lyra favoring a bit more of the early game aggressive choices, which stylistically does fit him as a player. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see where he actually continues that build. If he's going to go, you know, a lot of people do still like things like Warrior Black Cleaver. Um, you know, that style of kind of build can be pretty effective. Warrior Black Cleaver, Maw, etc. Um, does give you a lot of early game power with the AD. There's actually pretty good scaling on Kindred. Uh, but it is, it's one of those feeling things too where they, they can be pretty comparable, but it actually feels so much worse to play without the attack speed sometimes. Mm. Uh, you know, there's kind of more awkward fighting around and you do kind of lose a little bit of mobility there because uh, there's so much more time in between your attacks. But that being said, still a strong build and we'll see how effective he can be with it. Kind of checking back in, looks like Sven. Pretty good foothold here in the bot lane. Rod of Ages now ticking up. Apollo switched his boots to try and dodge some of those bindings. And uh, some early BF sword. Still getting there, but uh, at least has not been dying. I think more than anything, the time can yeah. trick has insulated a lot of that threat. Yeah, it really has. And you know they, they have certainly survived the lane. Uh, they do have TP back up, and he didn't actually have to expend it. So even if he gets pushed out again, he will steal the TP right back. For now, though, the game feeling pretty stable. Uh, both sides kind of just farming it out. Advantages on the bot side for TSM, advantages on the top side uh, so far for Clutch Gaming. This 50 boots is going to be very helpful as, as far as kind of avoiding a lot of these skill shots that TSM is going to be throwing towards Apollo, and he's going to have to be good at avoiding that. This is a bit much, uh, a bit more of a risky dragon that TSM is actually trying to take. Yeah, Grig has eaten uh, one too many Cloud Trade kids. Yeah. But he's going to have to back away as a result. It'll reset, so it's just going to be disengaged completely. But up on the top side, Haunter now has his cowl. So I'm not sure if he's going to be going for a Spirit Visage or an Adaptive. Adaptive can be very, very powerful, uh, you know, dealing with the Flame Spitter, the repeating damage. But at the same time, you have so much healing, actually, uh, from the Gragas passive. Uh, every time you, you cast a spell, healing up with that, the Spirit Visage sometimes could just end up being the better choice regardless and is kind of stronger against a lot of the other members. Everybody wants Happy Hour to be longer, Azale. <laughs> I get it. Let's see what uh, Haunted does go for. As Lyra is going to grab that crab on the right-hand side. For Biven also doing a really good job not just like keeping the lane even but and tracking Bjergsen, but now just straight up keeping Bjergsen in his place, which, as you mentioned, is where you want to be. So he's actually threatening the tower there in mid and giving CG a lot more room here in the middle of the map. Yeah, I mean, Bjergsen has kept his farm up pretty high, but it's also because he's taking jungle camps. And he's not taking jungle camps from the opponent. He's taking jungle camps from Greg, right? Like, he just went and took his, his own jungler's red buff. So, you know, that is one of those things where this is not stealing resources from your opponents. It's just taking resources from your own jungler. And that's fine if, if Bjergsen can then convert on the advantage. But, you know, you can see Mira is a bit ahead of, of Greg in farm. And that's partially because Bjergsen has actually taken his Raptors a couple times. He just took his red buff. 
Um, and, and that does, you know, kind of make it a little bit tougher. But TSM looking to try to make a play around mid lane. They don't want to give up the turret, and that's why you saw Grig coming down, Haunts are coming down, all looking to try to threaten any any sort of clutch move to finish that turret. Super respectful play though from Clutch, just backing off there for both Forbidden and Lyra, despite some decent strength. Fight here over Vision as Mithy looking for a binding. She's not gonna grab, but Apollo maybe a little too far forward. Deval ready, the next route's gonna miss. Here's Grig over the top. Apollo needs to be devoured away, and Hakuo knows it. Hakuo now flashes out after the pillar over it there. The binding misses as well, and Clutch. Houdini out of that one. Yeah, very well executed. Some nice sidesteps from Apollo, really dodging all the CC coming in. And then Hakuo calmly plays it out, eats up his AD carry, and uses his own flash to kind of keep him safe there. So well avoided in that 2v4 from Clutch. Clutch is now looking to pressure around mid lane here. They don't know where a lot of the members of TSM are, though, so it's hard to actually fully commit to this play. And Lyra is here more just as coverage in case uh, they try to jump onto him. When they try and jump at this point, Haunt oh, the big flank. Lyra burns the ulti already. Here comes Soli. Put down the equalizer. Lyra still trying to dash out. He wants to get a kill on the Bjergsen, but it's first blood instead. Over to Haunt to steal the trade onto Mythius for Miven. We'll get that kill. Now here comes Apollo looking for Bjergsen. Just misses the snipe. But now Sven actually going to be forced to flash away. Out of the shockwave he goes, but Clutch kind of head on that trade. Yeah, Clutch get out on the trade. TSM come away with the first blood. Actually, the slowest first blood of the season so far, but Clutch will get turret. They do get a kill of their own, so they're gonna be the ones, you know, coming out smiling from this one. And Lyra maybe could have even gotten away. He actually tried to play that pretty aggressively, jumping forward to try to finish off a kill. Still had his flash, could have maybe retreated out. Here it is one more time. Lyra is in the back, waiting for support, but Hanser is coming in, four man from TSM. Looks like a good initial play. Very early alt actually buys so much time. And then, you know, Bebevin, Apollo, Solo all coming in. Hakuo, we're gonna watch him die. Yep, no flash this time. Thick skin just to watch the world for a little bit longer. In cool color, Bjergsen though, able to get the kill. <laughs> Finally getting some progress on the Talon. Yeah, nicely done. And you can see TSM trying to donate that kill over to Bjergsen. We'll be able to grab a dragon here as well. Solo though is still pressuring up on the top side. Hanser doing well in this matchup. As expected, you can play it pretty even and did elect to go Spirit Visage, which is kind of the better all around choice. TSM has collected a couple dragons. Clutch has kind of collected a little bit of an early gold lead and that's really the exchange that they have made. Looks like Spellbook swap number one. is now done for Hakuo. Gonna TP back to the bot side and keep things going. Yeah, that's the first one I've seen him actually do, so... I believe that's the first one. Yeah, so that that is pretty long into the game to actually get that rolling. At this pace, we're never going to see him actually complete the cycle and actually get through the rest of those uh, Spellbook Summoners. And, and if you're not actively swapping out those Summoners very frequently, I don't really think it's worth it. It's probably just better to go straight up Guardian. So we'll kind of continue to track that and see... Uh, how effective he can be in the later stages. It was the slowest first blood of the split there, so I would be careful what you wish for. <laughs> it could be in for a long one, and at least he'll get TP back first once he does go through the cycle. But I agree, yeah, I think... Five more before he can get back I agree, to it's going to take probably too long. But you never, never know. It's Forbiven. Never say never. Of the flash, good pillar from Grig, but Forbiven very quick oh, on those. black shield. Wonderful black shield from Mithy, though. Does protect him for a little bit longer. Ooh, Lyra dashing forward. Yeah, that Buck Shield was, was really big, actually. Would have pulled Grig back in and perhaps forced out a flash there. Either way, TSM make the proactive play, trying to collapse on Febbin. They know that Febbin is winning this 1v1 pretty heavily straight up, so uh, they're trying to put a lot of pressure over there, trying to keep Bjergsen safe, uh, allowing him to get up those side lanes, because Bjergsen, I'm sure, is saying, hey, I need to be elsewhere. I can't be kept in mid lane. And they're not able to actually get anything going here. Febbin rushes for Ludens. That's going to help even more with wave clear. So he's just crushing through these waves and then being able to put on pressure nonstop, which is drawing Bjergsen back to the mid lane, which is making these roams fail. But again, threatening that play, looking for a four-man bot. Bjergsen is so fast for it. with Moby Boots and Cloud Drake. It actually feels a little unfair. <laughs> But uh, no dive happening just yet. Clutch continues yeah. to get shoved into the bot side, though. Exactly. I mean, Febbin is pushing in mid, uh, and they weren't willing to make that play because the minion waves get cleared out. And, you know, Bjergsen is usually more of that style of player who wants to always prioritize minion waves, who wants to push the waves, then go over. I've seen this movie so many times this game, because yeah. Apollo, once again, will be saved after a Binding Lands. That one, I wasn't sure if it was actually trying them trying to bait for, for Lyra and trying to get something done, but either way, it doesn't work out at all, and we'll be taking a, a big chunk of his health. 
TSM though invading, trying to take away some of these camps and trying to find ways to both be proactive here. Febben is flashless, so they're gonna look for this. Yeah, Hawks here one. as well. TP in for Bibin. Oh, Pops the stopwatch stop nice watch. and early. Pumpkin also coming up. Here's Solo. But uh, just here hanging out to check out the scenery. That was perfect. That was really well done from Febben there. Not much he could have done better than that, but TSM has this bot lane pressure advantage they've had the whole time. They are chunking down this turret. They have a lot of wards on this side of the map, so eventually they should be able to cash in on that turret and, and get some gold back for themselves. That ult from Hauntzer kind of looked like he was actually trying to predict a flash or a juke uh, from Febvin, but Febvin just straight up uses the stopwatch, gets away. Bjergsen now on the roam again here. He would love to finally make a play work. That was a juicy W from Zven. He actually got the double slow. Harklow forced to watch out, but Bjergsen going to go all the way under the turret. Gets one. Now Harklow going to go down as well. Ooh, the clutch bot lane did not handle that dive well at all. The previous one was so calmly handled. This time, you, you want to have Hakuo again. Eat up Jin, flash, then you spit out Apollo for even more distance, then Apollo flashes if he needs to. Instead, Apollo flashes first, Hakuo flashes to follow. He never actually devours up the Jin. Both of them die, so that one was really poorly handled by Clutch. Still though, they trade for the mid lane turret. They're pressuring top lane turret here as well and will be able to knock that down. So three turrets down fairly early. Both mid lane turrets lost here from Bjergsen so despite the fact that he has been involved in everything, Febvin has been punishing him every time he leaves the lane. Really smart play here from Clutch. Solo, not so he needed to flash, but he didn't want to chance it. So it does burn the summoner with the root incoming from Sven. Yeah, I mean, I think if you get rooted there, you're dead because you get pulled back in. Talon is there as well. He has no stopwatch. So I think it's a smart usage of the summoner. And it's one of those things where you don't get to flash after you get hooked because Correct. then you, you're you just flashing back to where you got pulled from. And here it is one more time. So you want Hawkwo, eat Apollo now, then flash, then you get the distance from the spit, then after that, Apollo can flash. So essentially the way, if you do it in the order that I'm talking about, Apollo can almost be, you know, like two flash distances away additional. Uh, and yes, Hawkwo will die regardless, but then you're not actually you know, losing both members and potentially you can even save Apollo's flash because he would have covered even more distance with just Tom Kench's flash, plus his, uh, plus his kind of, I don't know what you call it, but like the spit out basically uh, from Tom Kench's belly gives you some distance as well. So either way, a bit of a misstep there from them and they've been getting pressured heavily on the bottom side of the map because of all this roaming and TSM is cashing in on some of those advantages. Credit to Venomithi as well for playing the bot lane well, using those mages much more aggressively to make sure everything works out. Apollo actually defensively ulting just to make sure nothing else bad happened. But Clutch have kind of swapped up here to the top side, doing a good job with their turret advantages, but the gold lead, not massive so far. Still a very close game. Yeah, definitely a very close game here. It is anyone's side, and it's honestly... It's hard to say who the scaling advantage goes to because there is double marksman as far as actually pure damage. You have to say it goes to Clutch's side. But there's a powerful front line, like a very powerful run at you style composition here from TSM. So it's going to be so much about them finding the perfect engage and Clutch kiting back, disengaging, absorbing that damage, and then kind of returning fire. So, so much comes down to how they play out these fights. And really, uh, both sides are in a good position. Uh, to have a chance of winning. Look for the two mages, I think, on both sides here for Bivin. Having a good game so far. Sven also, as they both have two items completed, as TSM look to get yet another objective. Cloudbreak the second has been started by Grig. Yeah, and having, having all that additional move speed is going to be really nice for one of these compositions that has to close the gap, that has to run you down. I mean, really, they're trying to just get all on top. TSM wants a 5v5 death ball style fight where Swain is in on your face, the, the Talon is hitting everyone with his AoE, and Hauntzer is hitting a big ultimate. You know, you need to have them all stacked up, so Double Cloud Dragon is really gonna help them with that. And it's it's gonna be Bjergsen getting around the map so ridiculously fast with Moby Boots, plus all of the additional move speed from those Cloud Dragons and, and Talon's ability to kind of parkour. Uh, his move speed is, is ridiculously high. Yeah, I think it's about 500 right now. <laughs> so uh, pretty good, maybe a bit more. Yeah. Find out in just a second when the pubs kick back in. But I mean, Bjergsen yeah, 522 is... 5.22. That's a lot. Combat, just running around. Yeah, we kind of got trolled because he was back in the fountain. Home guy kicked in. We're like, well, this is not realistic yeah. at all. <laughs> TSM, though, again, just trying to use this talent a little bit more. Find someone in a side lane. CG have done a really good job protecting from uh, what's been a pretty strong pressure pick every time we've seen it. 
Tower of Evil, of course, has had a lot of success on it recently, yeah. even as recently as today. Jerkson has been spamming a lot, but I believe oh, this is his first play. Up oh, solo, wrong side of the tracks. Jerkson, this is a pretty simple one for him to try and pick up. Had himself popped, goodbye solo, and Jerkson once again gets the kill. Yep, nice kill there, pushed up way too far, doesn't have any vision. There's not a single ward from Clutch on that side of the map, and he doesn't have a tier one turret. Solo had no business being that far out. That is very forced stuff from him, and Barrett is on the map. TSM can kind of now invade and get some vision back on that side uh, because they have lost pressure elsewhere. So, you know, not the end of the world to give up that death, but certainly is uh, one Solo is going to want to have back. Yeah, you have so much less time than you maybe you usually think to get away from the super speedy talent. Clutch, I did try and apply some pressure around the Baron area as we are moving towards the 25 minute mark. Clutch, understand that that's probably going to be the biggest point of contention for the next 10, 15 minutes, depending on how the game plays out. And I uh, still haven't seen a big team fight yet from Clutch, which is kind of what we thought their comp was going to look for. Yeah. Obviously, if you get picked off, it's really bad to take 4v5s, but if Clutch can kind of stay together and find a good opportunity through all this side lane pressure from TSM, things uh, will look a lot better. I mean, part of the tough part is Clutch Clutch doesn't really get to choose when they fight because they have no engage, right? Like, what is your best engage? You just Rumble. jump all and, and kind of like yeah. walk at them. Um, so, you know, TSM really, as long as TSM does not get caught out in odd number of fights, they get to choose when to fight, and that is in their favor. Clutch's team fight is more about absorbing that initial pressure and then kind of winning the extended fight. Uh, something else we haven't really talked about yet is Lyra has not had his four bounties just yet. In 25, almost 26 minutes in the game, he's sitting on three. Uh, he really does need to hit that four bounties because team fighting on Kindred at 500 range is very, very difficult, especially when you're up against all these kind of bruiser-style champions who are up in your face, running you down. You really do need that additional 75 range. And uh, Lyra, whether you could want to say he hasn't prioritized the marks, has got unlucky, whatever it is, he is not there and it's going to be much weaker in the team fights because of it. You can see a lot of vision being cleared out here, though, by Clutch. Two pink wards in the area, although nice ward from TSM in the brush. Never mind, turned off by a control odd Clutch, making sure they get full vision. Yeah, so it is the Black Cleaver as that second item for Lyra. You can be able to be putting out quite a bit of damage here on two items, and they can burn down this Baron very, very quickly. There's no wards. TSM doesn't know. They do now. Now they're pinging over there. I don't think Clutch, uh, Clutch could try to finish. This, okay, this is going to be tied. Nice equalizer though. Oh, Greg in the to try and steal it. He does get it. Greg able to take down the Baron. And now CG are trapped in the Baron. Shockwave. Shockwave is nice. Off oh, there, pop there by Lyra, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The Gregasol pops them out. It's an absolute disaster for Clutch Gaming. That bear went down to 40 or 50 health. And Greg gets it. The Kindred Ultimate actually working against him as they drop the Kindred ult. Haunter ults everyone out of it, and TSM decimates the fight. They get the ace, they get the Baron, they're gonna knock down multiple turrets here as well, and Clutch has really just given up so, so much. This game was neck and neck, and, and now it is not even close. Yep, 4,000 gold, gonna keep going as Bjergsen takes a tier two in bot lane. Mid outer also falls. Now it's TSM that are up in turrets and well up in gold as we watch this one again. Yeah, I mean, this was always going to be close if, if Clutch actually tries to rush it down. They decide to commit to it. It's a nice equalizer, but Greg flashes over. And look at the Baron health. Smite comes out. It was smited by Lyra to 40 or 50 HP. And Lyra, the poor guy this whole split long, has lost 50-50 after 50-50 after 50-50. Here is another one. He just can't seem to hit a smite to save his life. And Grig, the latest recipient of the Lyra buff, means CSM is in full control, and that's that's a rough one. I mean, it, it could have gone either way. I, the thing is, even if they get that smite, I still think they get decimated in the fight. Oh, that yeah, that team fight close. doesn't look very different, even if they get the Baron. Yeah. So you have to question, and Hunter can just Ooh. probably walk away. I mean, he's he's very tanky. Cute ulti. Barrel slow him down, still running away. Keep running. Oh, flush. Devour. You know, trying to at least get one kill here. Haunter, though, going to buy a lot of time for his team. Oh, oh no. Straight into the trees. And a shutdown goes over to Lyra. Yeah. How do you actually expend his flash on the initial play? Could have gotten oh, a goodbye. Bjergsen dominating. Just tower dives for Biven with impunity. TSM still shoving down with the Baron. Remember, Clutch committed almost everyone to get one kill onto Haunter. Yep. No stopwatch. No Zonia is available for Febben there. 
and Bjergsen knows he doesn't have summoners because of the previous fight, so it's an easy all-in there for Bjergsen. Quick kill, and his ultimate is such a low cooldown at this point in the game because he has 40% CDR, they're pushing in on all sides, despite the fact that Hans are kind of misplayed there in the side lane to get killed. TSM still coming out on top because they're pushing elsewhere with the Baron. They're going to knock down an inhibitor. They're pressuring mid as well, and really they have full control. Yeah, 15 seconds on for Bivin. They're actually going to try and defend now. Lyra charging back in. Ult expended. Need to snipe Ben. It's close. He pops a stopwatch, but I think he's going to live. No, actually got shut down. Lyra had enough on the back end to get him down. And up. Jerkson dove in. Shadow Assault out for a bit of invis. Lyra trades his ult there to try and protect from the assassination attempt, and TSM will not get that in here. I'm not sure if that was actually Wolf that killed him off, or just perhaps the Red Smite burn uh, that did finish Sven after that, that Zonia's. He does go down, though. Either way, TSM still very positive on the total play. They knock down a couple of turrets. They almost get this inhibitor. Here it is one more time. Clutch, knowing they need to engage with their strength, slowly lose the base. They look for an opportunity here onto Sven. It's a good route up. The Equalizer has dropped. They have a lot of damage, and there's not much that Sven is actually life stealing off. That's part of the problem here. And yeah, it just. Red Smite, I think. Yeah, it just has to be the Red Smite, it looks like. It does actually burn him down, but there was no minions around, right? And normally, Swain in that Zonia heals right back up. But because there's no minions, only Lyra was in range and only then for a little bit, he really got nothing back, so he does end up falling down. Yeah, nice ult there from Apollo. Just barely got the last shot to at least make sure that could happen. TSM though, continuing to stack up objectives. They didn't get an inhibitor, but still got a ton of gold, a lot of inhibitors, and now a fourth Drake overall. Triple Cloud Drake Talon. Coming to a solo queue game near you. <laughs> if he hasn't been there already, 7,000 gold up now for TSM. Yeah, and, and this is actually so sad watching Leary still just has the three bounties. And at that point, you kind of have to ask, like, how well are you actually using your passive? Like, how well are you actually marking the correct targets in these fights? Because you know, he does have four kill participation. Pre four bounties, you can even still get scuttles and stuff, right? Like, he should have uh, those marks. And, and you can say what you want about not having enough map control because of Talon, but really, I think something that he, you need to have at this point in the game uh, for them to have much of a chance of really coming back. We'll see, though. TSM. Gonna try to keep the pressure on. Clutch looking to scale, looking to get these marksmen two effective points. You want Apollo on IE. You want him getting to kind of those luxury items where he can hope to survive a little bit better. Feels like we're close, but Clutch still needing a bit more gold to put them over some next key points. I mean, Forbidden has three items. He's been on Void Star for a while. So one good shockwave could tip the balance. It can, but on the other side of the coin, you see how fast he can go down. He doesn't have anything defensive, right? He has bought zero HP. He has no Zonias. So if Bjergsen ever gets on top of him, he's just dead. So you have to play very carefully around Lyra and his ultimate. But then there's a lot of answers for that on TSM side as well. A Swain getting in there with the ultimate. You can actually charge up your R2, the detonation, and then time that with the expiration on Kindred Ultimate to kill everyone. Hauser has his ultimate to answer that as well. So it's definitely tricky to play out these team fights for Clutch, especially from behind uh, when they are down in gold, when they are losing control on the map and losing pressure. DSM poised to take this game away from Clutch, but Clutch, in, I think, playing to some of the identity of this team is holding on versus the team that they've beaten so many times already this year. And, and you'd want to say that this is you know, pretty much all wrapped up for TSM. This is a guaranteed win, but it has not been the case for them. This is not the old TSM where you get them to late game and, it, and it's easy peasy from there. They have been a team that has been throwing games. They have been a team that has struggled to close out cleanly, you know, unlike they have in the past. So we have to kind of measure our expectations around that and see how well do you close out this game? You're up 7,000 gold. You have four dragons to zero. You have an inhibitor turret knocked down. If this is a game that TSM cannot close out or cannot close out cleanly, uh, then even with the win, you really have to kind of question uh, how well played was it? Like really, how much did they learn uh, from this game? How much can they improve from this game? Well, still tracking, I think Infinity Edge more than anything else. Apollo mm -hmm. is on the way, but not quite there just yet. Clutch, so doing a good job bouncing these waves back and forth. TSM without a major objective up, although Baron will be back in 10 seconds. Haven't really felt the need to do much of Anything other than push the waves and retain control. I mean, Apollo needs 300 gold for IE, so he's just about there. You can see that uh, Febman is actually going to go for 
a death cap very likely here as his next item and they're looking to fight he actually maybe onto his vent does have a dodge but lira already took so much damage still holding on to his ult though apollo challenge the the looking for the flank lira could be next that's one with a shot down flash slam after the ult is gonna grab it hakuo is actually fighting gurkha but he can't do anything despite the thick skin pop he flashes out of the way he may be safe but for Biven, being chased down there by Hornsa Clutch just can't do anything. Bjergsen, legendary, takes down for Biven. Mithy takes down Solo and TSM TP into the base to celebrate as Hakuo dies with his ult being channeled. And that is the way you want to see TSM close out this game. Hornsa pulls the trigger, drops the ult, the body slam flash, kills Lyra off before he can react, before he can get that ultimate down. And that is the end of the fight. Clutch, try to go proactive. Try to look for a play there, and it all backfires. TSM will take down Clutch and stop their free fall. Tough to sit five and five after week five, but TSM, if there ever is a time to rally, this is the game that starts it. It really is, but again, on Clutch's side, you have to question, why are you even going for that engage? I mean, their engage is, is Lyra queuing forward on a Kindred onto a 100% HP Swain, with his ultimate available, with his Zonia's available, without vision of the rest of the team. Like, in, in what world do you get that pick? And the saddest part about it is we talked about IE gold. There's 200 gold away for Apollo on his IE before they start that fight. You know, major item completions had yet to come through for their team, and they picked a very bad spot to fight for the kind of game right there, and Hauntzer's able to, to pull the trigger on a really nice engage, kill off Lyra, and that was that. I mean, I have to agree, I think, Scared of Baron seems like the obvious point, but I mean, you already defended when TSM had the Baron. Like, what are the chances you win that fight versus a fight you can organize after Baron has been taken or even win the Baron fight? Exactly, I mean, that, that's the thing. So you can be scared of Baron, but they, they have the Scuttle actually down around Baron, so they have some vision there. Uh, they have the ability to perhaps respond once Baron is already being started. You know, if you're scared of Baron, you get middling priority, you push that out, you fight for that, and then you fight for vision. You don't have to look uh, for a kindred engage on a full HP Swain who is extremely strong, right? That is not really the way to play that out. And it can be frustrating playing that from Clutch's side because they have no engage and you feel like you're trapped just waiting for TSM to make a move. But that's what you drafted yourselves into. So you have to play with patience. Well, Ovali is standing by to hear from the TSM support who just helped his team pick up a much needed win. Thanks, guys. Mithy, congratulations on finally taking down the TSM kryptonite that was Clutch Gaming. How are you guys finally able to pull it off? Uh, well, we won. <laughs> I mean, um, not really sure if we did anything different. I think uh, Clutch maybe just got stressed out, started Baron, and then just threw the game, like made it easy for us. So yeah, the game was kind of close until that moment. We were choking them out, and I think we had the better draft. So that went in our favor, yeah. I want to ask you about your teammate in the mid lane because Bjergsen had a stellar performance today. What did you think about him? Uh, I think he played super well, super confident. Uh, on top of that, he had not practiced Talon much, but we knew it was uh, the best pick for the situation. So yeah, he definitely stepped up and uh, yeah, carried the game. And since the beginning of the year, we've been kind of hearing about TSM trying to up their team cohesion and communication in order to unlock that high level play that fans know and love. So what is TSM missing right now? Um, a lot of things. Uh, <clears throat> it's hard to like just say exactly what we're missing. I think there's a lot of things that just don't really work well, but I think the main problem right now is we need to just think less and just do more, as in just stop thinking too much about like waves and farm and macro and just, if you're strong, just fight and kind of just we are too much, like, let's say there's like a, a spectrum, right? And we, we've been too much on the macro side and too little on the just fighting kind of spectrum. And yeah, we're just trying to go towards that direction. I think that's like at least the, the first step towards getting better, yeah. And that's for the team. But what about for you personally, trying to up your own performance? Uh, honestly, I think I'm uh, pretty good. Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't really read what uh, people say because uh, I think I'm my own biggest critic and I haven't really found anyone that can criticize myself better than myself. So I really, I mean, yeah, I just really uh, don't really mind. And I know I'm really, really fucking good. So that, that, I, that's, that's all there is to say. So good. Mithy, thank you. And for more of the game, let's hear from the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Avali. Think less. 
do more. Not the advice I'd give to my solo queue teammates. Do less, <laughs> think more, please. But for the pro stage, it is an interesting sentiment, especially kind of echoing some of the thoughts we've heard throughout the day, that this meta of all metas really rewards people who are willing to commit to something. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's something to be said about having too many, too many cooks in the kitchen, too many brains on the team. Someone's got to turn theirs off <laughs> and just pick some fights. And I, I can totally see that with a team that has so many veterans and skilled players all coming together to make it like a super team almost. You know, at some point, if everyone's not on the exact same page, nothing gets done. I can kind of understand uh, where they're coming from with the thinking too much because uh, they are TSM. You know, even though they haven't been super dominant lately, they are still probably the most popular team in NA. And there's going to be a lot of scrutiny at all their play, which I think can lead to hesitation. But uh, yeah, definitely a good way to solve that is just going for stuff, not really getting too focused on like, are we 100% advantage to win this fight? Like take no risks. A lot of time you just have to like buckle down and go for it. And uh, I think that could help them. TSM, thinking so much. Uh, draft, Mithy said that they uh, came away with the better draft this time around. It was a very meaty composition. You got the Gragas tank in the top lane, the Trundle, you've got a pretty elusive town as well as the Swain and the Morgana in the bot lane. How do we feel about this? composition well before the game i actually favored clutch's draft personally because uh they've got kindred which kindred excels against low range champions and, and from what i've seen she struggles against champs that can outrange her and make it hard for her to fight but if you've got like a bunch of divers coming into you and you've got kindred oriana that seems like it should go pretty well for you so i actually thought clutch's draft was a little better but tsm did get power picks being like swain morgana Talents look pretty good lately, so I guess they like what they got. Yeah, and to that point, like, you see Clutch has a hard time picking fights when they want them because they have all these great tools to punish someone if they come in, but they can't really choose their own. Yeah, I think that was one of the big things, right? If we were talking about taking action and being proactive and creating plays, even if you do have a lead and you don't have any form of, you know, hard initiation, then it does kind of change the way that the game is going and allow TSM, that's one of the teams that hasn't been able uh, to really make the games go their pace, actually have control. And then again, Mithy did point towards that Baron play as the big turning point in the match. Relatively even up to that, perhaps Clutch Gaming got a little bit. I you, I don't even know because to, to up to a certain point, it looked like they might have it. They got tentative Ooh. around it. Maybe they wanted to pull off. Then the call was to finish it. And the smite comes through for Greg at 48 HP after Lyra did throw out the first smite. I have to imagine that at some point in Lyra's life, he's going to win the lottery, make up for, for his all of the smite. Oh, smite. oh like, my no, God. Dude, <laughs> Smithy has all his good luck. For every Smithy, there needs to be a Lyra. Uh, Lyra has yeah. had the most unlucky smites ever. And you know, you're going to lose some smite fights. That's just the nature of it. But in theory, you should also win some, and, and yeah. they're not really getting those wins. Still waiting so, uh, Our sample game. size is getting big enough where I'm like, no, he's <laughs> just not good at smiting. The slow on the trigger finger there, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's, it's eager. It's plus, easy. if when they're going into that, you're thinking, oh, Grig has been stealing, you know, Barons left and right for TSM, and Lyra has been one of the worst. So that's a bad matchup for a smite matchup. That's a bad smite matchup. I like. One thing we can look at here as well is they do have Jin, who's pretty much known for securing Baron really well with his fourth shot. It can mm -hmm. hit for like upwards of 1,000 damage around this point in the time. So you combo that with Smite and you have like a 2k yeah. secure. So it uh, looked like Apollo didn't have the fourth shot ready when the Baron was at the threshold. So that could be a team mistake as well. Another thing we saw in there was good use of the Gragas ultimate, knocking them off the Kindred ult. Uh, TSM had multiple ways to, you know, pull people around, which at the beginning of the day, we were a little bit uh, skeptical about as we are like, ah, people... They focus too much. There's a little bit of a tunnel vision there on always trying to get some knockbacks when you're versus Kindred. But the reason is when they pull it off like that, it looks so clean and it really does you know, take away uh, so much of the recourse that they had in that fight. I think to the caster's point uh, in that replay, regardless of the Baron steal, that fight wasn't going to go well for Clutch Gaming at that moment. So even if they were lucky enough to secure it, it's still probably a lost team fight and a loss of control on the map. Yeah, you're still pinned up against the wall, against the team, as you just lost Baron Buff. You're down a lot of combat stats now. So that would have probably gone south either way. Uh, as I'm looking at this for TSM, I, I think Bjergsen quietly had a really good game too. Uh, it didn't show at first because he was in lane a little bit more than people are used to seeing when Mickey's playing it necessarily. But then he still got to the bot lane for a critical dive, picked off Rumble once or twice, and then twice and it was really good in some of the team fights. A uh, five and five TSM, oh sorry, it looks like- Oh, well, 
I, I just wanted to kind of point out a few of the clutch builds. I think that they could have got more advantages in the game with different item builds. Uh, I saw Kindred went Warrior, and people have been pretty back and forth about which one's better, Warrior or Bloodraiser, but I think in this situation, he probably would have been better off with Bloodraiser because he's against Gragas, Trundle, uh, Swain. Swain, just very high health champions, and the Shred would do a lot. So, And the second one was Jin running Halo Blades. That's kind of caught on lately because it can give you so much attack damage, but against caster lanes where you're constantly getting poked down, Fleet Footwork helps a lot more, so... I think that if Clutch made a few adjustments to their builds, they might have had a better time in this game. Minor tweaks can make huge differences for TSM. They find a win here to move to 5-5, five and five, keeping their dreams of playoffs alive and perhaps a trip to Worlds, as it is one of the winningest organizations in the NALCS history. We've got one more game after the commercial break. Golden Guardians and Equifox duke it out after this.